Hey guys, welcome back. This is Fulfron the Today we're gonna take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Folder 2. Now a lot of you might wonder why you want a flip phone, flip Android phone in 2017. So I'm gonna break this review into two crowds who they would want on their own or would be just gifted without their will. Firstly, if you're just an average Joe wondering what the flip Android phone is like, just don't bother, it's, it's awful. To start with, it barely has any sensors. That means, of course, no games, no gyroscopes, and no magnetometer. That means you cannot have the rotating maps. Your map is simply not going to tell you which side is north and which side you're facing. And also, there, of course, is no brightness sensor. Ambient light sensor is absent, so you have to control that manually, or, or if you want to use your keypad, you can control that manually. And when you're outside, you have to take on that outdoor mode, which is going to be activated for 15 minutes and get disabled on its own. And the thing is, you will need that quite often because the screen here is... It's not terrible, but it has awful outside eligibility if you want to talk about that. And this is a bit of minor little question of mine. Why it has 15 seconds as a keypad backlight duration when the screen timeout is all the way up to 30 minutes. I think the keypad backlight should be on as long as the screen is on, but there really isn't such option. And then there is no earphone jack. That means you have to share the micro USB port with your earphone, which is bundled a micro USB earphone like you have to do in iPhone 7. That means you can charge and listen to music at the same time. You will have to use a Bluetooth earphone if you want that. And Samsung doesn't offer a 3.5 millimeter standard adapter. So if you want to use your own, I think you'll have to hunt one on eBay if it exists. And also, if you're a fan of theming function on the galaxies, then you're out of luck. Although it runs under Marshmallow, it doesn't have theming. It's not really a serious issue, just a minor little complaint here. Something that I had harder time with was the software itself. I really don't think it's an optimized software for a feature phone, likely a flip phone style. Pretty much everything is intended to be used with your finger through the touchscreen. As an example, I told you you'll have to pull down the notification bar quite often, firstly because it's an Android, and secondly because you'll have to control that brightness quite often. And guess what? There is no way to pull down the notification bar through the keypad. You'll have to touch your screen. And the whole interface itself is simply just not meant to be used, the cursor, d-pad, and the keypads. Um, the only part that was designed specifically was that easy mode, which has bigger icons and somewhat elderly friendly, like a picture photo frame right there. Use that for today and this month, a little pedometer widget and easy settings for your brightness. But aside from this easy mode, you're out of luck. The interesting part is that it seems like Samsung doesn't want me to use the keypad. Let's say that I pressed a button right here to get into context and I wanted to create one. So I get into create and it just pops up the on-screen keyboard, although I entered the menu with the D-pad. So with these things happening again and again, you'll just end up using this on-screen keypad very, very awkwardly like this. Okay, maybe that's just because you're one of the millennials seeking for a lot of features on your phone. What about the elders or the kids that are originally intended user of the phone? Well, let's talk about the elderly. We're just gonna call the grandparents. Grandparents, start with the keypad. Um, the keypad sounds pretty good, but compare that with the LG Wine Smart. It's got separated keypad and it's a robbery. It's very easy to press. I don't really like this phone, but it's got better keypad. But this is just a flat keypad that requires a lot of force to press the button. They're very tactile that even myself find it rather hard to press on. And another thing is that speaker. Two grills like there seems like it's a pretty woofer, powerful, friendly speaker. No, it's not. It's not particularly low in volume. It's pretty loud. It's loud enough. But it's got terrible audio quality. People like us can hook this into a Bluetooth speaker and listen to our music. But grandparents with the speaker, I really don't want them to use this speaker to enjoy their music. And the next more important part is the lack of external screen. The external screens on the flip phones have been their until it turned into an Android. Don't get me wrong, there are Android-based flip phones with the external screens, even from Samsung, although they're a lot more expensive. But seriously, putting a black and white screen in that massive place couldn't be that expensive, and I think that's totally necessary. It's not a premium luxury phone, but this still costs $250, and I have to open up my phone every time to check the timer notification, and I think my grandparents are gonna find that rather inconvenient. Well, there are some thoughtful features too, like the selector leaving a little trail so people with the less than optimal vision could track them down. But again, the whole interface is way too complicated, even for the basic features like the phone call and messaging. And there are only five apps that can be applied to the easy mode. Just in case, if you're wondering, the keypad does support T9, so I can just start typing like, start typing with 
the keypad without pressing the same keys again. So that's something that Samsung has done right. And now I have to tell you about that basic features. There is a dedicated camera key that you can just press on and there is a camera. Uh, the thing about the camera is I've always thought that the flip phone should have the camera right there because that's where the screen is. So it could be parallel to your vision. With this angle, with this flip angle, you're not looking directly into what camera is looking. So it's a bit confusing. But anyway, taking that aside, this is one awful camera. Low lighting photos like darkness, that is completely out of the game. But even just indoors, it already creates way too shaky photos. It's incredibly easy to get shaky shots with this camera. Even with the f1.9, a rather brighter than usual lens. Well, yes, it does have autofocus and flashlight, so that's not as terrible as some other phones. But one thing that you have to make sure is to never take selfie with this camera. This is one of the worst selfie cams I've ever tried. Well, at the end of the day, this does have some good parts. The display itself is not that bad. It's 3.8 inches, WVJ. I think that's totally suitable resolution for this screen size. Although I have to tell you that it's got terrible viewing angle and it's not that bright. What I did really like about it was the battery life. It constantly gave me around 5 hours and 20 minutes, which is pretty good in my standards. I use 4G LTE network all the time. I surf the web, which drains the battery a lot. So if you have more of an easier pattern, like more Wi-Fi, less web surfing, more messenger rather, then you'll be able to easily stand around a day or even day and a half with the battery life. What I was not happy about was, however, the battery charging time. It takes 2 hours and 20 minutes for 1900 milliamps of battery. After all, as a verdict, there is only one thing that I want to tell you. Just, just get a boring phone. And that goes the same with the older folks. I think the grandparents need the higher end flagship smartphones more than I do because I can stick to the cheaper phones and I can start fixing problems. I can repartition them. I can install my Christy cars. I can change the brightness manually. I can plug in my Bluetooth headphone to fix the problems. But the older people usually have harder time fixing those problems. So flagship phones that already has all the features they want, I think that's what they deserve, but it's just one of my opinion. But anyway, if the basic talk and messaging feature is really all they need, then get a feature phone. This is strictly saying not a feature phone. This is an Android smartphone in a flip style. An Android in a flip phone without the external touchscreen simply doesn't work. So just get a classic old feature phone without Android. I think this still could serve one good role, that is to make you use less of the smartphone. If you're addicted to your smartphone, it's going to make you use your phone like this all the time to type in the screen because there are so many apps that do not support the keypad properly. So yeah, I ended up using my phone less. So if that's what you want or if that's what you want for your kids, then here you go, Galaxy Folder 2. Otherwise, stick to your boring phones, please. Thank you always for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And we'll see you guys later. Ciao.